I tell you, everybody knows that theme, and everybody wants to wiggle their nose. Why? Well, there were 254 episodes, and never again a more popular television series that delved into the magical and the supernatural than Bewitched. And, of course, that was starring Elizabeth Montgomery. And Adam Michael James, well, he takes it under the magnifying glass with his book called The Bewitched Continuum. The Ultimate Linear Guide to the Classic TV Series. And, of course, our own Derek Zemrak has invited Adam to compare and contrast this fun success. Nice to have you both with us on K-Hi. I appreciate it. It's great to be here. Okay, Adam. i got to ask you, Adam, about this. Why, Why such a fascination with Bewitched? Well, I mean, uh, I think like with everything, it, it goes back to childhood. I certainly, uh, I discovered the show when I was eight years old, um, back when it was in syndication in the late 70s, and we still had shag carpet on the floor. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and um, so there's that, you know, when you're a child, you're fascinated with the magic. But then as I grew up, you know, I noticed that there was a, there was a lot more to the show than that. You know, the, the, the humor is very intelligently written and it's just, it's just got staying power. I mean, I think that's why we're still talking about it 52 years after it premiered. The, the major... Yeah, f- go ahead, go ahead, Derek. Oh, no, I was saying, you know, Adam, I go, I actually, you know, I've read a lot of books, you know, on movies and TVs and those kind of... I have never seen one this complete. I mean, it's like, it's, everything's in there. <laughs> well, that's because it's idea. Adam. He does those things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that's true. Yeah. You know me too well. That's that's what I do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when, you know, you, when you sent me the book, I was expecting a, a book. This is, a, this is like... It's, bigger than the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is the Bible of Bewitched, is what it was. That's right. it's, the, it's the Bewitched Bible, chapter and verse. Well, you know, the thing about it is, is um, I've been a student of continuity for you know quite a while. It goes back to the 90s when I discovered this book about um, Star Trek for the Next Generation, and I was reading about it. Well, you know, if you look, you can see Tasha Yar waving in the turbo. And I was like, really? I didn't know that. <laughs> it just sort of became a thing. And um, I, I write um, opinion columns for SoapCentral.com where I have to look at the bold and beautiful every two weeks. And I do the same thing. I go, wait a minute, they never said that or, you know, that kind of thing. So it kind of um, worked its way into Bewitched after it came out on DVD. And I would look at an episode and go, wait a second, you know, three episodes. They just said you couldn't use your powers in the past. And now they're saying you can. And this is how we look at television today. It's certainly not the way they looked at television when Bewitched was on. But now, you know, we're live tweeting and, you know, saying all the same kind of stuff on social media as a show airs. So I thought, you know what, it might be fun to just kind of sit down and see what Bewitched looks like when you look at it under that lens. You know, what's amazing, right. too, Adam, is that, you know, they changed Darren's, you know, um, because of the illness. Uh, and, right. and yet people accepted it. There was no problem. You know, and they made changes along the way. And people didn't mind that at all. That's true. Well, you know, back then shows aired once a year, maybe twice. If it reran over the summer, we, we had them on little 13 inch screens, you know, maybe you got a 27 if you were really lucky. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, we, you know, people just didn't have that kind of um, retention uh, from one week to the next because they didn't have to. But now we, that we right. can look at things back to back to back, you know, binge mm-hmm. watching and stuff, we, we do notice these things. So I, I think you couldn't get away with something like that now, but you could back in the 60s and 70s. Yeah, because right. then they and have. Also, you to... mentioned... Go ahead. Oh, no, you mentioned in the book there's been, there were several actors and that came on the show that played multiple roles and people oh yes really and, and, and <laughs> yes different characters and sometimes only a month or two apart whereas if you know again if we look at that now we go wait a second i know that face but you know nobody they were counting on people having too much to do with in their regular lives to remember oh yeah i just saw parley bear on here you know yeah. a few weeks ago as a different character so again well, just just a different time and, and i think that's something even though i do pick things apart in the book it's always meant to be fun and respectful and with a an awareness of the historical context and the things that they were dealing with when they you know put the show on the air did you have a favorite character Oh, well, Samantha, of course. <laughs> oh, well, uh, besides Samantha, because, I mean, she oh, was besides the star. Samantha. Oh, yeah. now, now you're making it difficult. <laughs> of course I am. Oh, wow. Um, uh, probably a toss-up between Aunt Clara and Serena, but it, I really couldn't decide one way or the other. You know who my, my favorite was? Uh, Uncle Arthur. 
Paul Lynn. Oh, yeah. He, oh, was yeah, so, he is Paul Lynn uh, as Uncle Arthur, Arthur and you accept yeah. it. How many, yeah. how many episodes did is, Paul Lynn do? I was just going to say, he was only in 11 episodes. I know. Out of, 200, out of 254. But I, still like, an impact. <laughs> I still yeah, like him. Yeah, he made that, 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 that you that remember tells, him. Yeah. That, yeah, that tells you he did amazing jobs. Because you, know, you think about, you know, Bewitch, you go down the character's aunt door, blah, 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 and you always run into Paul, Paul Lynn eventually. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like he was an impact on that show. Yeah. And that only be 11 Absolutely. episodes. That's amazing. How many, amazing. Yeah. How many Tabithas were there? There were quite a few, weren't there? Well, um... Unless you want to count the infants, when when Tabitha was first born, they they went through a few of those, uh-huh. and and of course, um, as they do now, um, they always have twins, twin mm-hmm. children on on television shows because of the child labor laws. But the ones that everybody remembers is Aaron and Diane Murphy, um, and Aaron actually kind of took over the bulk of it um, after fourth season, so she's really the one that we we remember. Amazing. What was the? Uh, what, do you have a favorite ep- episode? Oh, I do yeah, actually, and, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's in there. Content. And I actually, yeah, I mean, not only do I, uh, you know, kind of analyze all the episodes, and I kind of treat the show as if, as if it's one big episode, really. But um, I also put some stuff in the back. I counted up uh, how many times Samantha says, "Oh, my stars." How many times <laughs> Larry fires Darren? There's lists of who got turned into what, and I do have a, a top ten um, best and worst. And so I'll, I'll give it away because um, it's so timely. Um, my favorite episode is um, Sisters at Heart, which was the seventh season Christmas episode. Oh, right. Okay, why? Well, I, I just think it was it was so strong. It was so strongly written. I mean, on 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 the surface, you had Tabitha and her African American friend Lisa wanting to be sisters so badly that Tabitha accidentally gave them different pigmented polka dots. So you know, <laughs> they, they, there's the comedy of dealing with that. But then you also have. Um, one of Darren's clients thinking that Darren is married to Lisa's African-American mother and kind of, you know, getting all weirded out by an interracial marriage and you're just dealing with that. And, you know, I think, you know, Elizabeth Montgomery and uh, William Asher, their producer, director, and also her husband, believed in equality and acceptance. And this was this was a theme that really was throughout the entire series. But this one episode, Sisters of the Heart, was like really the culmination of it. And, you know, they, they um, Samantha said, you know, all men are brothers, even if they're girls. Uh, and th- I think wow. I think that's why that sticks out to me, because not only was it magical and fun, but it had something to say. Yeah. And unfortunately, right. it's still well, a less, a, something that we still need to hear, especially these days. Yeah, no kidding. Right. So, Anna, Michael, do you feel that, you know, like these sitcoms, the specials like Christmas and Thanksgiving and maybe Halloween, those people remember those more than other ones? Oh, sure. I mean, especially if we grew up with it. You know, it's, it's like uh, I can't go a Christmas without looking at Charlie Brown Christmas, <laughs> you know? Right, exactly. <laughs> you know? And, and we, we all, you know, people that, that grew up with Bewitched Christmas episodes, they're going to stick because of the correlation, but also, you know, because they're, they're just a part of us. And, and, they're, and they're good episodes. And the acting, right, no, yeah. the acting was good. I mean, Agnes Moorhead, you know. The, the, oh my God! Incredible, yeah. amazing, and she looked like she was having so much fun doing it too. I don't know that she would have admitted to that, but you could just tell that that little twinkle in her eye as she, you know, did stuff to Darren that that Agnes was just having the time of her life up there. Yeah, <laughs> right. So you also have another section here which says, "Which witch is which?" Can you talk a little <laughs> bit about that section? <laughs> yes. Um, let me just look. Quick. There's so many sections. Um, what I wanted to do was um, just kind of analyze the show, not just the episodes, but kind of distill it all down to, um, you know, it, it, its core thing. And which which is which is is basically character bi- bi- biographies based on information that was pulled out of, um, you know, whichever episode stuff happened to be mentioned. Um, apparently, Samantha had a lot of cousins, even though you didn't actually see them, but you heard about them. Or uh, you hear Louise had a sister somewhere, or, you know, you kind of get a clue of when the Kravitzes were married and things like that. So I thought it'd be kind of interesting to put them 
uh, and, and list them uh, alphabetically. And, and also, it's kind of funny because sometimes the information doesn't match up oh. <laughs> from one episode to another. Like for, I mean, today, again, you couldn't really get away with that. No. But um, Darren, for example, uh, had a birthday in February or April, depending on which season it was. <laughs> <laughs> now I gotta ask you, how many times did Andorra call Darren Durwood? That is in the book, to tell you the truth. Uh, take a guess. I'll at least uh, in the ballpark. Eight years worth, I would say, at least seventy-five times. Higher. Really? I say, I say, yeah. I say six hundred something. No. Oh, not not, not quite. It's lower than that. Okay. But so, yeah, it was it was quite a lot. It was quite a lot, and that's another thing that we remember about that. Well, and I think it's great that we're remembering it because one of the things that I wanted to do with this book, I mean, aside from you know being a total bewitched geek and just having it, <laughs> you know an excuse to put it all together in, in a phone book, um, was. To keep the show alive and to introduce it to, you know, new generations because, you know, we're talking as the further it goes back in the past, you know, the more likely it is people, you know, might forget about it. And so that was that was a big reason. And, you know, you may know that um, Bernard Fox, um, Dr. Bombay, right. yeah. just away away. last week, Aww. he was 89. And I had some discussions with, you know, people on you know, Facebook groups about that. And in my opinion, is it's, it's, it's terrible that he's gone. But he lives on as long as nobody forgets the witch. So it just kind of goes back to my whole mission statement with the book. Okay. Just wanted to so, remind us that magic still exists in the world. You bet. So what's your next geeky endeavor? Oh, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I have some ideas, but there, uh, one of the things that um, that I want to do, uh, actually we produced a, a musical about the Canadian author L.M. Montgomery. She wrote um, Anna Green Gables. Uh, you may or may not have heard of her. No. But uh, we, we did a musical about her life um, back in 2008 and 2009, and that had to go through more than one rewrite. And uh, so we're, we're hoping to get that back out there. And you know, one of the things I'd like to do in the immediate is, uh, you know, because this is the, the we wish continue is such a you know hefty tome. Um, I would like to uh, put out an ebook version of it, so I'm I am planning that, and I hope to announce a release date uh, for that uh, around New Year's on on the Facebook group. Fantastic! Now you well, have a website, so I assume, don't you? Oh yes, um, there's uh, the Bewitched Continuum dot com. That mm-hmm. one's a, kind of a no brainer. Uh, I tend to post more on the Facebook group, which is Facebook dot com slash BW Continuum, and if folks uh, want to check that out uh, anytime soon, um, I do have a uh, 33% off sale um, through CreateSpace that, where the coupon code is posted there, and next week, uh, post-Christmas sale, we're going to do 40% off. So wow. if you want to the, come to the Facebook group, save some money. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, well, and, and if they don't, well, you can still get I, I just want to make sure I get his book plugged in here. Uh, so Amazon, the other places, it's available there too, right? Yes, it's, it's okay. also it's available through Amazon. It's also available through Create Space, which is uh, what the sale is through. Like I said, the information I, I could bleed on about coupon codes, but that will get confusing. So just come to facebook.com slash BW Continuum for those. And you can go into a Barnes & Noble and order it. I am cold. Great. Derek? Wow. No, it's a fa- fascinating book. I mean, like I said, it's it's, it's so detailed. It's it's, just, it's amazing. I mean, you know, um, Adam, Michael, you did a great job on the book. And it, it, even if you're not a Bewitch fan, you should go out and get this book because you see how a book should really be written in detail. Don't skip anything. And and the other thing too is, even if you didn't see it at the beginning, even if you weren't a fan, by just watching it, it takes you away and you just kind of relax and forget about the the everyday world of of uh, internet and digital and tweeting. You know, <laughs> and just enjoy. Exactly. And, and and that was one thing I hoped that the book would do too is that it would encourage people to revisit the series and you know. You can watch it, the series in order. You can skip around. Uh, you can do the same thing with the book. You know, so yeah, it was. It was. Uh, thank you so much too about the the compliments about the book because I feel like oh good, I, I accomplished what I set out to do. Yeah, you but did. But also that that I wanted to make sure that people remember there is a show and it's not just about the book. Well, let me put it this way, Adam Michael, I haven't even seen the book and I'm impressed. Oh, well, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, listen, thank you so much for being with us today. I hope you'll come back and visit again. 
I would love that. Merry Christmas to you both. Happy 2017. Keep your fingers crossed. You betcha. <laughs> That's <good>. for sure. <laughs> you are so right. <laughs> Thank you so much. You know, much. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take care, Adam Michael. Thank you so much. And just a reminder, the name of the book, again, is The Bewitched Continuum, and it's Adam Michael, just a nice guy, Adam Michael James. Okay, I think uh, we still have uh, Derek online with us. Hi, Derek. Hello. Okay, we're going to be talking about fences now. He's a neat guy. I like him. Yeah, a lot of energy, a lot you, of fun. Great group book. I mean, it's amazing. Like I said, when I got the book, I was like, "Holy cow!" I've got to get it now. We, I'm didn't, not, I, we didn't. We didn't ask him how long it took him to write it, but it had to be years. I mean, I'm talking years. I, absolutely. Well, I'm hooked. I'm going to go get it. 